Rothamsted Research, uh, we have got a facility here in Devon. We work on huge data sets. So the event title is Digital Agriculture and Environment Solutions and how the opportunities are available for SMEs and large companies to work with Rothamsted. So as I mentioned myself, um, I'm, Roth I'm Khalid Mahmoud, and then uh, I'll uh, be uh, working today, my colleague, Paul Harris, he will be talking about uh, Northwick Farm Platform. And my colleague, Professor Leon High, he will cover uh, system science modeling uh, with Northwick Farm Platform later. Those who do not know what is Northwick Farm Platform, I will give a bit of introduction later on. And then uh, we have mentioned here some other topics, what we uh, could prove uh, through uh, the farm platform data sets we have, the digital agriculture innovation solutions. So potential of IoT sensor test bed, and then uh, expert systems, AI techniques, and then we will be looking at uh, how good ground reference data is uh, helpful, which Rothamsted has got a huge repository. And then uh, with our uh, Earth observation products, how we can uh, reference this data. And then we'll be touching on food supply chain and blockchain technologies, their role. I would say we'll just uh, touch a few of these areas, but in more depth, we'll go in uh, issues around, uh, I would say some of the key challenges which are faced by the food and farming industry, especially around nutrient loss, greenhouse gas emissions. So, and at the end, so we, we plan to finish uh, the discussion, um, uh, I would say uh, these slides by 40 minutes, 1040, and then we'll have 20 minutes for Q and A. So by all means, please, uh, use the chat box to um, send your questions and we'll have these questions later on. I would like to say in the beginning, um, this uh, event is organized by Rothamsted, but it's part of a program called Impact Lab. And Impact Lab is a program which is funded by ERDF, which is the European Regional Development Fund. And uh, we have got seven partners in this program. So I'll introduce them later on. So those who, uh, who already know about Rothamsted, sorry again, repetition of this slide, you might have seen in my talks before or my other colleagues as well. So Rothamsted is a, has got a huge history uh, in terms of its uh, innovation. Rothamsted Research Institute was established back in 1843 and uh, its uh, innovation go uh, with its innovation uh, is continuity of its experiments. One of the experiments that we started back in 1843 uh, it's called Broadbach experiment on wheat, uh, on, around wheat nutrition. Uh, it's still ongoing. And uh, this one, uh, together with another experiment, Park Grass, which started back in 1856, these two experiments are already ongoing last 176 years, I would say 177 years now. And uh, that has a huge repository of data sets that Rotham Set has got. Every year we, uh, uh, this, this site is uh, which is showing you the picture is in Harpenden. We have uh, these weed trials and we collect the soil samples, we collect the, uh, the, the grains and we also collect the stock as well. So we have a repository. So if someone, anyone is interested, they could go on Rothamsted website and then can access this information there. And then Rothamsted has history of uh, in other innovations uh, with uh, phosphorus fertilizers. This work was done at Rothamsted. And then um, one of these pesticides, which I would say is not a good time to mention these days. So with pollution and all those, these things. Parathride, they were, uh, in, I would say, invented at Rothamsted. And phenoxyacid, uh, which is a herbicide. And then uh, in modern day, the statistics, which are we using these days, uh, the basis of data science that was developed. Uh, one of our founding scientists, are Ronald Fisher. He was the founding father of uh, those modern statistics. So at Rothamsted, we have got two campuses in the UK, and uh, we have got around 1,000 hectares we have got. Uh, one facility is near London, Harpenden, and then two other facilities close by. One is Woburn, near Cranfield, the other one is um, in east of the country, uh, Barnfield, and then um, Broomsborn, sorry, Broomsborn. And then we have got this facility in, in Devon, which is primarily a livestock raising system research research facility. So we have got three uh, UK national capabilities. One of them is farm platform, which we'll cover later on. As you can see on the right side is a picture, a nice picture with the sheep. 
And then uh, we have the long-term field experiment, which I mentioned in the very beginning. And then we also have the National Insect Survey that started back in 1970, I guess, yeah. And uh, we have got around 500 people working on the, uh, on, the, on the Institute, and they come from all over the world, 35 nationalities. So what do we do? So our work is uh, uh, primarily from lab to landscape. We do a lot of work in um, uh, soil microbes, uh, on plant nutrition, plant health, soil health. And then uh, we work on around plant protection. I mentioned earlier, uh, our, our huge emphasis these days is around developing uh, smart surveillance and monitoring systems, uh, and issues around pesticide resistance, post-harvest losses, uh, post-harvest uh, uh, pest, pest host interactions, and uh, there's a lot of work being done on uh, smart crop production as well. On the right-hand side, we do a lot of work on soil, water, and environment, which is primarily the work is done here at Northwick. And then we uh, do a lot of work in uh, computational sciences with big data as well. And Rothamsted is part of uh, three big agitech centers in the UK. So one is uh, agitech uh, agrimetrics, and the other one is uh, CHAP, which is around smart crop protection, and third one is uh, around uh, livestock. It's called CL. So we can provide more details if you have interest in those centers later on. So what we do here at Northwick. So Northwick is primarily a grazing livestock and arable system. And arable we included only a two years ago. Uh, primarily, our arable work is done at Harpenden. And then the uh, whole emphasis is on uh, looking at trade-offs associated with management of suitable agriculture. What are the best uh, farm management practices? And that could help us to uh, achieve uh, net zero emissions target these days. And it's a unique facility. I won't go in more details. Uh, my colleague, uh, Professor Paul Harris, will go in more details about Northwick Farm Platform, what sort of data we are collecting there, and it's... Um, uh, I would say access for the farming industry. So uh, just a quick uh, overview of uh, Impact Lab, this program, which is funded by ERDF. It was uh, established back in 20, 2018, and now we are, um, oh, 2017, sorry. So we are halfway. Uh, program is uh, aimed to, to go another year by June 2021, but there's also potential opportunity that it will extend another year by 2022. And the primary emphasis of this, this uh, program is, you see this picture of, this is a right of a site in um, Extra Science Park. It's, uh, uh, it's near the high performance supercomputers. Uh, this lab is uh, housing this uh, impact lab itself. And this is partnership of seven partners. It's, it's led by University of Exeter, uh, working with Met Office, University of Plymouth, Rothamsted, uh, Plymouth Marine Lab, Plymouth College of Art, and then we work with the Extra City Futures. And whole emphasis is uh, how we can use the data science to drive innovation in advanced engineering, marine health, agitech, and environment sector. And how we do that, uh, this, this program provides some funding. This, it provides uh, R&D support. So we provide 12, hour, 12 hours of free business consultancy. And then we do work on R&D projects with industry. So primarily working with SMEs from Southwest, uh, from Devon area, but that could also allow companies or other partners which are coming from other regions as well. So they have to partner with SMEs from the area. Uh, we do provide innovation grants and uh, they come with a match. So typically at, um, the grant is 60%, 40% is a match. Then we do provide innovation space and then uh, access to business network. We work with Set Squared and other regional networks. And we do provide mentoring. And last two and a half years, we have got over 450 clients. So a few of them I just picked up here. We'll see uh, more details. You can look at our website on Impact Lab website, which has got uh, these case studies. So I picked up a few of uh, Agitech related projects here. So one was their uh, elemental digest system. This is a SME based here in Devon, and they are developing novel fertilizers using uh, slaughterhouse waste. And the company has, uh, uh, is, is, is doing really well. They have raised 2.5 million and uh, it fits to the, uh, uh, to the, I would say the UK, um, I would say industrial challenge uh, strategy uh, It's part of circular economy. So it's created jobs in Devon and uh, it's been picked up by the Guardian as well. So basically it's a 
providing a novel fertilizer, which has um, phosphorus, uh, which is a finite resource. Another company we're working with is called Breeder. Uh, Breeder is again, an interesting concept. Uh, it's an online dashboard helping uh, improving livestock farming efficiency. And they have got already more than 500 farmers uh, signed up in the UK. Now they have uh, gone to North America, signing up farmers in the US and Canada. So it's again, uh, they started working with Rothamsted and we helped them from, uh, from zero to get to the next level. We worked with another company looking at uh, regenerative agriculture, uh, it's a region farm. And again, uh, they have developed a demonstrator and the company has raised uh, another half a million through their um, uh, private funding round. So just quickly, I'll just go to another slide here. So it's another company called OTA Water, and uh, which is now taken over by another company but we help them developing a, a water harvesting system, which is uh, again, mirroring, uh, taking the uh, use of data science and uh, providing early warning in terms of when you need to turn on your uh, water system to harvest the rain. Uh, Milk Elizer, another company, which is was working with uh, Impact Lab, but they are now taken over by another company. So th this is sort of interesting ideas which we've been working with the companies. I just give you a quick uh, overview of some of other projects which we have delivered. And uh, they are, I would say, they are pretty smart projects. So we do not take more than, I would say, three to six months to get a quick sort of uh, run through for, for these uh, companies. I'll just stop over here. Uh, the list is here, so you could uh, uh, look at our website as well. I'll just uh, go to my colleague, uh, Paul Harris. Uh, we'll take questions at the end. So uh, Paul Harris will be able to give you insight to uh, Northwick Farm Blade Farm. Over to you, Paul. Thank you. So, can you share your screen? <clears throat> can we all see that? Yes, please. Can we all see it? Somebody say yes. Can, can you see it? Yes, please. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So I'm um, I'm Paul Harris, also known as Harry, because that's still on my my name there on the Zoom meeting. Um, so I, uh, I'm in charge of the um, the, the Northwick Farm platform. Uh, my background is I'm a, I'm a data science scientist, a statistician. Um, so the overview of this talk, I'll, I'll just a slide on the national capabilities at Rothamsted, slide on Northwick. I'll go through the Northwick farm platform. I'll do a bit on its um, setup in 2010. Um, it's used as a research facility, which you can come and use the farm platform to conduct an experiment and delivery, delivery of open data and um, there's also off-farm off -farm platform collections that relate to the farm platform and, and networks from a uh, network of farm, platform, farm platforms. And I'll just finish with its <coughs> uh, four key objectives. Right, um, national capabilities at Rothamsted. So Khaled um, um, mentioned these in his talk. So there's, it's essentially there's three national capabilities. You've got the long-term experiments, started ages ago in 1843. Then you've got the Rothamsted Insect Survey in 64, which is UK wide. And then the farm platform at Northwick, which started in 2010. So it's, so it's 10 years old now. So we're, but we're still the new kid on the block, essentially. And the remit of a BBSRC national capability is uh, to make the data freely available and also to use as a research facility. So that's the key remit of these national capabilities. Essentially, it's for all to, all to use. Right, uh, Northwick. <clears throat> so Northwick started in 1955. So it's 65 years old. It's originally Fison's Fertilizer Research Station. And it's been part of various other institutes over the years. And then it was integrated into Rothamsted Research in 2009. So it's been part of Rothamsted Research for 11 years now. It's always been a grasslands research institute. And it's a very nice place to work, as you can see from the um, slide of the building there. So that's 500 years old. And the farm platform is only one aspect of Northwick. There's other experiments too, so that's useful um, to be reminded of. It's not just about the farm platform of North Northwick. We do lots of other experiments on grasslands research. <coughs> and we're located in Devon in the southwest. Right, the farm platform. 
All right, so it's essentially, if we look at the map on the left-hand side, we essentially we've got three farms. We've got a red farm, a blue farm, and a green farm. We've also got a house system, which represents the four farm. And we've also got, um, so the housing system there is just for cattle. We've also got housing for, for sheep, but that's not, the, that's not a fifth farm. With sheep, sheep only lasts one season. <clears throat> so on those, so on those four, on these, on the three outdoor farms, we measure as much as possible the inputs and the outputs for productivity, emissions, losses. So each each farm has five um, uh, catchments or subcatchments that are hydrologically isolated, and we capture all the water and the runoff. Okay, from so each farm has got five subcatchments. From those five subcatchments, we capture all the water and, and the water emissions. We also measure greenhouse gases. We measure product, um, farm productivity and a whole host of things. Because it's all about understanding the system as a whole. Now, in its at its setup, these fr these three three farms are all permanent pasture. So the setup in 2010, they were all permanent pasture. Then the first intervention, we changed the pasture type. So for, um, uh, one farm went to high sugar grass and clover. We, so it was plowed and reseeded from permanent pasture. And another farm went to high sugar grass. So that was the first post baseline phase. We've got a baseline period where they're all permanent pasture. And we've got the first post baseline period where two of the three farms transitioned into a different um, pasture type. Now, over the last couple of years, we've gone into the second post baseline phase. Um, farm one always, the green farm always stays a permanent pasture. That's, that's sort of like our control or our long term monitoring um, farm. The blue farm, which was um, high sugar grass and clover, that is transitioning to multifunctional sward. Now, that would have happened uh, this year because of um, the pandemic. We've had a delay it and it will be happening next year. Um, but what what happened in 2004, what has happened in 2019, the high sugar grass farm, uh, farm uh, the red farm transitioned to a arable farm. Now, because we did that, we've, 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 um, we created a four farm where the cattle stay housed. So that's our four farming system, the cattle um, stay within the housing for their, for their lifetime. So currently we've got four farms, three outdoor, one indoor, We've also got use of it. We also got housing for, sh for sheep too. And we tried to capture as much of the system as possible um, by, um, by through measurement. Right, so what do we collect? <coughs> so on the screen here, the data, uh, this data sets here, that's what we release through the data portal. That's all the data that we collect um, and we make openly available. These data collections here are more limited. They may eventually be uh, released, but currently, currently not. And they're, they're actually, a lot of those data collections are from when the farm platform was used as a research facility, where you come and use the facility, uh, conduct an experiment, collect some data, and combine it with the core data, which is over here. Okay, but these are limited. Some of these limited collections will eventually go over to, these, to this collection here and be released through the data the farm platform uh, website and data portal. So we've got data on field and grazing management for uh, cattle, sheep and silage, that's what that's our products. Uh, we've got livestock performance, we've got um, grass and, sol and silage performance essentially, the, the quality, nutrients and mass. And um, the jewel in the crown for the farm platform is the water emissions and chemistry, so we, we collect that every 15 minutes at the edge of each uh, subcatchment, so there's 15 subcatchments in all, there's there's three farms. Uh, we've also got data on soil moisture, soil temperature and rainfall. Uh, we've got MET data. Uh, we've got greenhouse gas emissions, which have just recently been released through the data portal. And we've got <coughs> lots of field surveys for soils, plants, and also soil bugs. Now, in addition to that, we've also got a Cosmos UK site, which is soil moisture. That's run through CH. 
We're also an environmental change network site, so we've got data for that. That's, that's been running longer than the farm platform. And we've also got grass check GP data, GB data, which is um, uh, grass yield um, using drones and stuff and plate meters. So in, in essence, we've got a lot of data going back now 10 years. <clears throat> so just a bit on the setup, it's, it was just, <clears throat> it was an ideal place to set up a farm platform for uh, grassland <clears throat> to understand uh, system science in, in the grassland context. And the soils and topography are ideal. We've got a, a clay layer, so we capture, uh, that's not too deep, so we capture um, uh, all the water running off the fields. And um, so this is construction of the drains. So to get the hydro hydrologically isolated subcatchments, and this was all done in 2010. And these are the flumes that, um, where we, um, we measure the flow and the water chemistry. And these are the instru instruments that we measure the water chemistry with. And this is all sort of circa 2010 and a bit later. So, <clears throat> and they're off the shelf sensors. There's, so, you know, many of them are getting a bit dated now. There's potential to, um, to improve them and enhance them. Um, yep, yeah, so it's um, so the water, this is the water data again. So it's um, telemetry and fiber optics that goes straight back to, um, to the cloud essentially. And I'll just play this video to show. <clears throat> so this is, this is one of the, the flume stations at the corner of a, of a, of a, uh, a sub catchment. So that's after a, a storm event. And that's the water runoff that we can we can capture. I think that's quite a, a big storm event. <clears throat> so basically, we're measuring flow there, and we're also measuring the water chemistry. And then so that's the water, so that's the net and the water flow and, and water quality. And we also measure greenhouse gases. So we got um, we got chamber systems which we move around the field. So there's three chamber systems, each with 12 chambers in each system. So there's the 12 chambers. And then we move the whole 12, we rotate them around the field in every two weeks. And the chamber open, the these chambers open in sequence along the 12. So they measure CO2, N2O and CH4. So it's chamber systems. So that'll only be in three, that'll only be in three of the 15 subcatchments, so only in one and a subcatchment of each outdoor farm. So it doesn't cover all 15 uh, subcatchment stroke fields. We've also got three eddy covariance towers in each of the three farms, um, also measuring the same uh, three greenhouse gases. And also we've got green feed systems for uh, greenhouse gases in the house facilities, both in the, in the cattle house facilities and the sheep house facilities. Um, currently, this, this data is freely available, the eddy covariance. This is due for release and this is due for release, but currently it has not been processed and ready for release. <clears throat> so we've got data on the field and grazing management. So that's just a list of what um, how we conduct the grazing and the, the field management on the, on the free uh, grassland, uh, free um, livestock farm, two livestock farms. And remember now we've also got an, an, an arable farm, which is the red one. That's just um, generally standard uh, management best practice. And we've got um, 75 ewes per farm and 30 uh, cattle. And that's our uh, fertilizer relation rates. And also we have, um, so sometimes we, we always have one silage cut and sometimes we have two. Right. And we also do field surveys. Now these are really resource hungry. So we, these are not as often, not as high resolution in, in a temporal sense as, as, as many of the other data sets like the water data, or the, especially the water data sets. So we have some intermittent um, high, so high resolution field surveys across the whole farm platform. That's on the 25 meter, meter grid. And then we, but we, what we do now is we have quarterly low resolution surveys because the high resolution ones took some time to do. <coughs> and um, they're in boat and unboat, so they're every um, three months. 
Um, you, you don't have to read that slide. It just, it's just saying that it's just emphasizing that we've had, in addition to all those core and uh, data collections that were released and we collect, we have these um, farm platform experiments. So far, there's been a, over 120 additional experiments using the farm platform as a research facility. There'll be studies in greenhouse gases, livestock health, livestock movement, uh, pests and diseases, remote sensing, soil biology, soil physics. So this data is not released, but there's always the opportunity to um, uh, uh, talk with the, the leader of those these additional experiments to see if you can use some of their data or uh, combine resources or even learn from what was already what was found during one of these experiments. Right, so <coughs> um, core outputs of the farm platform is delivering the data and that's delivered through the, uh, the farm platform data portal. That was established in 2016, so we'd already collected six years of data before we started to release it. So now we've been releasing this data for four years and we're up to date now, which is good. And also, if you go to the Farm Platform website, you'll get lots of lots of other information on the, on the Farm Platform, on the data, you've got the user guides, you've got the publications, you've got the hypotheses, and key research findings, and uh, ways around things, additional bits of R code and scripts just to manipulate the data. So as much as possible that we try to make the data product uh, user friendly. We've also got um, an experiments database too, just to say <coughs> back to this slide here. So you can you can search all those um, experiments, see what was collected. So the data is not actually in that um, farm platform experiments database, but you can search for what was collected. Um, so, and so far we've got 54 million records. Uh, then just to say, <coughs> In addition to the farm platform, which is the core experiment of three farms, plus three outdoor farms plus one uh, indoor house farm, we also got some pilot studies that feed into the farm platform. These pilot studies here were to in inform the change of treatments, and um, so what um, what variety of wheat to sow in the arable conversion, and what and how to do the multifunctional sward conversion. We also relate to the catchment that the farm platform sits in. <coughs> so we monitor water in the catchment that it sits in and tall catchment. And our data outputs can influence this in the in the England, so the western side of England. So, so when we measure soil loss on the farm platform through models and upscaling, we can set up something to say about how that would influence nationally. We also link to um, uh, for a global farm platform network <coughs> and also long-term experiments network. So we're part of a, we're basically a high resolution data hub of research farms globally. So I'm losing my voice. <coughs> so just as a summary, currently our main re research using the farm platform is, is we're basically the farm scale experiment linking the, the lab and the plot scale experiments to the farm and then to the national scale through mechanism understanding of sustainability metrics. That's what we're currently doing at the moment. Um, as a UK national capability, <coughs> uh, release data and we use, and it's used as a research facility and we've got long-term monitoring in the green farm only. We're a node of a farm platform network. And we can link <coughs> to the spokes of uh, local uh, of farmer networks, real farm networks. And then increasingly we're trying to get over here, which is uh, more the sort of uh, modern data, use the modern data science tools, improve our data collections, um, make things all IOT'd with APIs and stuff. So that's what we're trying to move towards. And this is what this our um, webinar is about is that we can link with industry to, to help us move forward into a, a modern sort of a Norfolk farm platform version 2.0. Uh, so that's me, Dub. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Harry. Thanks for giving insight to Farm Plate Farm and the amazing uh, data sets Rothamsted has 54 million data sets. So now I'm conscious of the time, so I'll just move on to our colleague, uh, Professor Leanne Haibu.
will give insight to modeling. So you can share your screen, Leon. Hi. But I'll encourage the participants to ask any questions here in the chat box, please. Thank you. Make this more interactive at the end. Yeah, honey, uh, you I just unmuted myself. Can I yeah, see, yeah. see your slide? Yes, we can't yet, not, not yet. Not yet? No. How about this one? Mm, okay. I'm so just a share again. Uh, Shall I start from here, my end, otherwise? Just give it a second, otherwise I'll just share from my end. Do not? No, so I'll share from mine. Okay, good. So it will be easier. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I tried to before, it used to work. It was going in the recording. Okay, let me put it now. And then. Sorry for this technical hiccup. Right. Hmm. This is the work. I'm trying it now. Um, let's move this one. So this one. Okay. Okay. It'll be in a minute. This is the one. I got it. Okay. Okay. Good. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, so my name is Leon Hai Wu. Uh, I'm an agriculture uh, system modeler. I spent almost uh, my whole career pyramid, uh, pyramid to uh, period to develop uh, agriculture systems model. Um, next slide, please, Kali. Yeah. Uh, so this is a uh, link to the um, so land, uh, uh, housing of or, or animal. Uh, and also in, uh, integrate to the, the environment conditions and the management uh, to look at the um, production um, losses and emissions. And could you um, press the next one? Yeah. And related to the um, spaxes, that's the, um, the extended uh, spaxes. Uh, to look, look at the whole systems of, of, of the um, nutrient uh, movement. Um, um, so next slide, please. So this is the, uh, the core uh, part of the spax, uh, spaxes. Uh, to look here, just uh, look at the carbon, nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, um, cycling within the system. Uh, and also the link to the water movement and, and the plant growth. So this is among uh, this is among um, program of this boxes. So I just because of time limitations, I just very briefly uh, and to um, demonstrate that how the model uses the data collected from the um, uh, Northwick farm platform. So next slide, please. Yeah, this is the, the, the my opponent, the Harry has shown uh, this, the, uh, the signs. So next slide. Yeah. So we try to use this, uh, the data, uh, the water flow data uh, to um, validate the model, especially for what losses, even to look at the um, uh, right, hand, right hand, the bottom right hand side, uh, that's the, uh, the validation of water flow, uh, water fluxes. Uh, through the water flow. Uh, and also we use the uh, special data to look at the gas emissions, biomass distribution within a single field. So that's the uh, top right um, panel, they show this. And also we use the data to look at the nitrogen uh, budget uh, and the carbon budgets. So next slide, Steve, please. Yeah, this is the um, the um, demonstrate uh, the how the performance 
of this, these three different uh, um, formulates uh, on the nitrogen bodies. So I, I open to the very through this so because this I have published. <clears throat> uh, and next slide, please. Yeah, this is a carbon similarly. So we can see that which uh, formulates could uh, secure more carbon in soil. And also have a look at the, the different periods or temporal um, dynamics uh, of the carbon uh, sequestration. So if you just have the receding, if you look at the, the middle one, uh, there's a balance that's this negative. That means that's the carbon release because of receding. But after that, we'll see the uh, uh, gradually carbon will be built up in soil. So this will give us some uh, um, indication uh, which the um, management system will be better to uh, secure more carbon. So this will be uh, uh, better to reflect the, the our uh, current policy on carbon emissions or net, day, uh, net zero emissions. So next slide, please. Yeah, we, we right now we're trying to use the, uh, the data collected uh, for the uh, left way uh, gain uh, to uh, validate the model and to look at the, the animal individual animal growth. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, you see just in this the individual animals uh, life weight or, or growth uh, for different, this is the, the, the top two panels, uh, so the, um, the beef and the, uh, the bottom two panels uh, is in the individual uh, uh, lamb growth. So you can see the uh, much better uh, similar to the uh, cattle growth but uh, the, the lamp uh, growth uh, didn't very well to perform. So we are still working on the science. So next slide, please. Oh, so that's it. Right, probably see, uh, that's okay. Probably that's, 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 the, that's the short. Yeah, so this is the, this is the really just you know uh, to try to demonstrate you know, how uh, we kind of use the, the data um, to um, validate our models uh, and to um, uh, try to link it to the, the, um, the uh, IOT cells. So I think that's, that's the, what I am going to say. Thank you very much. Very much. Thank you. Um, very helpful to understand uh, the nitrogen and um, the carbon budgeting. Uh, work that we have been doing. Excellent. Now we go back again to uh, our Harry, uh, Professor Paul Harris, and uh, our colleague uh, Stellan Korsak. They will be giving us in insight how we can use this data to address the current challenges faced by the industry. So how do we engage with the industry? So over to you, Harry, please. Thank you. So you are mute. Sorry, you're mute. Still mute. You are mute. Maybe I can unmute you. Maybe. Can I? No, you are still mute. Mm, nope. Uh, Emma, can, can you have a look, please? What's happening here? I can't unmute him manually. All I can do is request, and I have sent a request. There we go. He's yes, unmuted. Yes. That's it. Thank you. Right there. You can hear me. <clears throat> right. So, so this presentation is about how what what the farm platform needs. It needs to sort of update itself with um, digital science tools, and this is where industry can really engage with the farm platform to help us do this. So if you think that we've been collecting data for 10, 10 years, but we haven't really updated ourselves and we don't collect everything, it's, it's very difficult to collect everything. There's opportunities to, um, for sensor development, making things IoT'd, opportunities for um, data science de development, AI tools, there's, there's plenty of opportunities to help us get to where we want to be. Then the ultimate aim is to possibly sort of um, 
we're capturing all this data, why don't we try and simulate the processes and then we're sort of moving to our uh, digital twin ideas. So this is, this is what we want to get. We can get this through grants and stuff. We can also get this with help from industry. <clears throat> um, so what we offer, we've got, you know, we've got an awful lot of data. We got that we got open data on grassland and apple connections on productivity, emissions, soil and plant health, animal health and welfare. We've just got we've got a lot of data, we've got 10 years of it. And so, <clears throat> so we got all this historical data and, and of course we keep on collecting this data, it's, it's ongoing. And we've also conducted different interventions. We had the first interventions when we just changed the pasture type, and then more recent in interventions where we got an, an arable system and also a hail system. So there's, there's plenty to work with. Because um, <clears throat> we've often said we've got expertise in agricultural system science, so we can help there. And we've also got some data science capabilities, especially um, working through Impact Lab, which is what Impact Lab's about. So we've got this freely and openly available data, and we've got expertise in agricultural system science. Um, so this is just, this is basically just a list of what what we could potentially do. We could try on uh, new um, sensing technologies. We can put them. We can co-locate them with existing ones. Say you've got a, an idea for a new water chemistry sensor that can be co-located with our existing water chemistry sensor, and then we can see how it performs. Um, um, just sensors that um, directly relay the data to the cloud. And, and, and with APIs, etc., it would be all really useful because we're, we're a bit behind the game with some of these things. Um, <clears throat> new um, AI algorithms, machine learning algorithms, um, linking um, process-based models, which Lee and Hai were saying there with data-driven models, which Stellium will talk about in a, in a bit. We've got outdoor and indoor house sensing. Um, no, there's capability for outdoor and indoor house uh, sensing. There's also networks of data. We could have networks uh, uh, within the field, um, across um, from field to field, um, a farm scale. And then we can also start to link data across farms. <coughs> so that's also potentially with our uh, farmer networks or with a company's farmer network. And um, we can have soil sensors, plant based sensors, water based sensors, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, all, all potential for industry to get involved. Of helping us achieve um, farm platform version 2.0. We can put sensors on animals, inside animals, or, or uh, sensors on machinery, on the tractors, uh, could use uh, as potential for robotics. <coughs> uh, remote sensing data, we've got because we've got so much data, you can you can um, ground, <laughs> you've got lots of ground reference data or ground truth data for remote sensing products, such as um, uh, site, we can use a silage cut, so we've got soil moisture data for a soil moisture um, remote sensing product. <clears throat> and again, there's potential for um, developing uh, new models to do this. And um, we can do decision support tools, which um, uh, Lee and High's model <coughs> and, and can be developed into. And also, <coughs> there's a thing called interactive AI or expert systems, which is, sort of, which is actually the modern equivalent of expert systems. And we can also link to um, supply and blockchain technologies because we've got, we've got nutritional data on the animals, we've got um, data from the abattoir and that can be linked to the so supply chain and the food, the food processing um, industry and, and the supermarket. So there's, there's plenty of potential there. So we're just at the start of those, um, that, that, um, that network. So yes, there's just plenty of potential. And now I'm going to pass over to Stellian. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Harry. So hi, everyone. So I will just very quickly just give an example of modeling capabilities uh, we have at, that we uh, have applied at Northwick Farm Platform. Um, it's, and that's from my perspective as someone who just finished his PhD. So um, my PhD was focused on um, using different modeling techniques to improve the characterization of um, um, of peak flow events. Um, in, uh, so, North Big Farm platform is grassland. Grassland is crucial for the uh, UK economy, and not only. Uh, next, please. Um, <clears throat> so, as I said, uh, the um, 
Next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, um, as I said, uh, my um, my research was focused on uh, proof realization of peak flow events. Uh, this is because it increases the risk of flooding, uh, which in general co can cause damages of billions. And more specifically, in a grassland context, it can um, increase sediment and nutrient losses, intensify the erosion, and increase the possibility of slides. Uh, and as was previously mentioned in the North Peak Farm platform, and all the data that is collected uh, there provide excellent opportunities. Um, for um, modeling development and uh, application. Uh, next slide, please. So this is just uh, a quick example um, of uh, one of, uh, of the research from my PhD where we used um, Lian height model, um, Sparxis, in a post-processing uh, framework um, and combined it uh, with a statistical model that stems from uh, extreme value theory and uh, machine learning techniques uh, and combine them, uh, all the three models, in a hybrid modeling approach. Uh, I won't go into the details um, of, uh, of this research. Um, more, uh, you can find it uh, in the paper. Uh, but um, what is important is that at the end, we did manage to, um, to get improved and more accurate representation of the uh, peak flow events. And the next question is, why, why is that important? What, what, what is the implication of that? Um, next, please. And uh, I think one of, of the implications could be uh, that this piece of information could be used for improved flood risk modeling. Um, this, is, um, this is not my work. Uh, this is, not, um, um, this is an, uh, an extensive literature review that was performed a few years ago and shows that uh, actually agriculture um, is quite underrepresented, and this because <clears throat> it is considered that uh, for the same exposure, agriculture is a sector that would have less damages in monetary um, uh, compared to other sectors. Um, and despite the fact that there exist lots of um, models have been proposed, uh, univariate, multivariate, uh, for different sectors that include lots of different functions um, uh, there there is no um, there's no one <clears throat> uh, robust uh, there's no one uh, model that could use be as a reference or, or as a benchmark uh, and all of them um, require regional adjustment uh, and uh, it require a lot of data which uh, is abundant in uh, the, uh, the North Creek farm platform um, so I think there is a uh, there is a potential for a lot of uh, research and uh, application in this uh, in this area uh, in order to uh, support uh, the evaluation and selection of models depending on the uh, desired usage uh, or regional focus uh, either in the insurance industry or in general uh, for the in, for the flood risk uh, community. Um, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Stalin. Thank you. A wonderful uh, discussion. So I think I'm just going to open up a uh, uh, floor for some questions. We've only got seven minutes left, so I'm conscious of the time. So we don't want to give a, a webinar fatigue. So anyone having a question, please raise your hand and I'll open up and give you a chance, give you a chance to speak. I couldn't see any hand raised here. Emma, do you see anybody raising hand here or anything in the chat box? Does it does Zoom raise hands? Yeah, raise hand. There is an option to have a raise hand somewhere. Do we have? Usually it should be. No, I can't see okay. anything. Okay. Um, but yeah, if anyone has oh <laughs> uh, in the re uh, reactions. No. I just want to add here because uh, uh today's webinar was uh, we just picked um sort of uh, the data side of uh, the Rothenstedt research in terms of the work that we're doing and uh, these data sets are available and expertise we have and the modeling, but we have got a whole host of, uh, uh, I would say, capability and uh, expertise working in the system approach. So we have colleagues working on the life cycle analysis. Uh, uh, Professor Taro, he's working in the joint appointment with Rothenstedt and University of Bristol. Uh, recently, they did a, a work for uh, CL on net zero emissions. And then we have got Professor A.D. Colon. He does a lot of work on uh, water, water emissions and uh, sedimentation. 
And then we have other colleagues like Martin Blackwell, he's working on um, um, sort of uh, phosphorus, its availability and issues around, um, uh, I would say, improving um, uh, slow release fertilizers, their impact on environment. So, I mean, if there is any interest from the industry, please, by all means, get in touch with me via email uh, or through our website. And then, uh, because the good thing is that we have got funding available through Impact Lab. So we would be able to, to test those ideas um, through a sort of smart project, uh, three to six months. And we have done a lot of projects in the past with the industry. I showed some of examples already, but just to sort of ask, uh, maybe uh, if no one is asking question, maybe I think there is something. So we've had, yeah, we've had a question from Anne-Marie uh, and the question is, what is the timing for Impact Lab given that it's an e given that it is ERDF money? Are you still working with companies? And I'm happy to take that one, Khaled. Um, yes, please, so <laughs> the, uh, the short answer is that um, the Britons leaving the EU has no impact whatsoever on our funding um, because the pot of money that we um, are funded from has been agreed um, beyond the end of the project. So the project is currently scheduled to come to an end um, next year and we are going through, we've actually put in an extension request and we're just waiting for the result of that. So um, it's, it's good news. Okay, Emma, I think you just elaborate here on the, 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 yeah. Sorry, somebody's asking a question here. No, so I'll just elaborate what Emma has said. Uh, in the Impact Lab, is we're working in uh, in a partnership. We are seven partners, and uh, some programs like working with the researchers, so the companies that they have to sort of come up with uh, their challenge, and they will sit together and uh, see if there is a need to have two or three partners working together, uh, University of Plymouth, University of Exeter, um, and having a sort of a met office on board. So there is a huge um, sort of data resource, data expertise is available. So if anyone has an idea or challenge they are keen to explore, and by all means, you can send us an email. Somebody's asking, we will be, okay, there's something is a different question. Okay, no, I think it's a there's an offshoot which produce a lot of data. Okay, I think I, I, I won't be able to read it, but just to elaborate here, maybe I'll just go back to uh, Harry. Harry, could you please give an uh, example of the projects that you've been working with in the industry? I know you've been quite active working with the industry. Any interesting uh, sort of products that companies had taken that forward using the farm platform? Um, so the three projects I've worked on, um, the first one was a remote sensing one using um, trying to validate uh, validate their so it's a remote sensing product soil moisture, and it was using our soil moisture data plus actually the Cosmos soil moisture data from CH, um, so that was um, helped their um, soil moisture product. Uh, the other one was the water harvesting and the smart and also uh, smart pond technology, which is the the water lagoon from the housing. That one's still ongoing, <clears throat> so that's, that'll create a dashboard and sort of, so it's sort of like a, a water use efficiency um, project to use uh, the water, harvest the water and use it, reuse it, and um, sort of spray in the fields and stuff. So unfortunately, it rains so much in Devon; it doesn't always, it's not always necessary. And then the third one was a, a co-location of a water sensor, of a water chemistry sensor, and that's that one's also ongoing. And see whether um, so see if it, it's, it it measures the water chemistry as, as well as the existing ones, but also to predict water chemistry parameters that we don't measure using um, AI. So, that's, so those are three examples that I've worked on. Okay, thank you, Harry. Um, I think just one minute left. I'll just add there was another interesting project where we were working with a large company working with a small company. So it's led by Red Pill Group, which is based in Plymouth. Plymouth, and they are working together with uh, BT, British Telecom, and we are again, again testing some interesting ideas about uh, real-time data, uh, data sensing and the use of IoT devices. So this would be a 5G uh, narrow band IoT project. So more details would, would emerge uh, once this project would be up and running. So with that, I would say, um, uh, Stellan, you want to add anything? with your expertise in data science, providing companies some of the help. You've got a question as well, Stanley. Yes. Uh, 
Yes, if it's possible to extend the flood management studies uh, to India. Um, uh, well, I think so. I guess like with, with some, uh, uh, this type of models required, um, require some regional adjustment. Um, but I mean, the type of the models that we described, uh, I think will be well suited for any flow process. So I think that could be easily transferable uh, to them. Uh, then, as I said, I'm not um, expertise in uh, uh, in um, uh, in risk modeling. Uh, so that is something uh, that would be interesting to um, uh, to further explore. Um, so yeah, yeah. With that, I would say thank you so much, Stalin, and thank you. Uh, uh, all of the participants for sparing time. I know it's uh, very hectic these days. So thanks for taking interest. And uh, to know more about uh, Rothamsted, please visit our website. And uh, I, I put my email address in the very beginning, uh, khalid.mahmood.rothamsted.ac.uk. Uh, Drop me a line if you have an interest in Impact Lab. We are still up and running for another year, I would say. For sure, I could say until yeah. June 2021. But uh, there is another uh, possibility we'll get this project running all, until June 2022. So uh, by all means, Emma, Emma, you want to say his final word and then we've uh, closed the... Uh, yeah, I was just going to say thank you very much to all the speakers um, and just that I'll circulate all of your um, contact details along with the recording to this session in a few hours' time when it's done. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.